Okay, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to be here. How to publish a paper in a scientific journal, the editor's view. You know, paper is a commodity of thin material. Science, for scientific, is in the broadest sense refers to any system of knowledge which attempts to model objective reality. You have to write it in order to be able to publish it. And publishing can be done on the web or on paper, as you know. Um, the editor doesn't appear in this definition, but I agree that somehow the editor has an important role to play, and that's why we are here today. If you look at output in science, you can see that the most productive countries are the United States. This is a study from Thomson Scientific in 2007. Uh, Japan, Germany, England, and so forth. So that's also the place where this gets read. And one way to measure the output of science or the publication in scientific journals is to assess how, many, how often these papers are cited. And that results in the impact factor. So if you look at the most cited countries, it's again the United States, England, Germany, Japan, France, and so forth. And interestingly enough, the most cited journals are in biology and chemistry, in science, nature, and medicine comes, unfortunately, at the very end. So what we do doesn't seem to be very important. <laughs> Further on, when you look, for instance, at the most cited clinical papers, they are mostly on cancer and uh, not so much on cardiac surgery, as you know. So, what has the editor to do in all this? Well, he has to consider uh, what the association wants, that's the, the mandate that he gets, what the publisher wants, what the authors want, and maybe he has an opinion on his own. Uh, so, for the association, for instance, of the European Association or for the American Association of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, it's all the same. Publishing a scientific journal is one of the tasks in accordance to the bylaws. And of course, for the acts, uh, if we have to produce a scientific journal, it's preferably a good one. And uh, it should not be only a marketing tool for the industry. So, uh, of course, the the ACT scientific journal competes with other journals in the field. The, therefore, the EACT scientific journal have to improve the quality, which translates into impact factor, among others. And if you want to improve the impact factor, you have to be more selective. You have to get the best papers in your journal, and that means you have to increase the rejection rate of the less good papers. What's the publisher looking for? Publishing journals is a business, and what the publishers want is to attract advertisement, because that pays. They want to increase subscription numbers, because higher print runs lower the cost per unit, because you can divide the cost of the editorial office by a higher number of uh, subscribers. Publisher also wants quality, because that's an argument to sell the product, so he wants a higher impact factor. So the publisher encouraged to be more selective, to select the best papers, and to increase rejection rate. What do the authors want? Well, they want their paper to be published. The faster the better, the easier the better. No more minimal rules for submission, no more only minimal revisions, no charges. Ideally, immediate publication as it is on the web and in print for free. Well, Ideally, in the highest ranking journal with several profiling editorials as first paper in the issue and possibly a reward for the highest number of citations ever. That's the dream of the author. Well, the editor uh, has also some ideas about this, and he would like to have new stuff, good science, structured presentation, we have heard about that, fluent language, nice illustration, updated references. And then, finally, uh, journal is also a business, because if you can't cover your cost, you have to close. So you have to attract advertisement, you have to increase subscriptions, you have to improve quality, impact factor, so you have to be more selective, increase rejection rate. So in the European Association, we are in the lucky situations that we have three different options for publishing. Uh, 
We have the European Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery, which is an impact factor driven publication. The impact factor is now 2.18. We have the ICVS, which is a web-driven open access journal, where we can put in things which are maybe less new, but which are practiced, uh, which reflect what we really do. We can also talk about things people want, uh, do not so often want to hear about. And then Marco Turina has launched uh, NMCTS, which is method-driven, and where we can put videos and show uh, how we do things. Uh, this is from 2006. Google at that time showed for the European Journal 214,000 hits, for the ICVTs 590,000 hits, and for the MMCTS 13,600. So MMCTS at that time was very new. ICVTS was open access, and the European Journal was uh, subscription-based. So that explains why open access is of high interest. The download numbers uh, for last year are for the European Journal 600,000, ICVTS 600,000, but I don't the numbers for the MMCTS. The difference here is that the European Journal has a much bigger uh, treasure of uh, papers as compared to the ICVTS, which is much younger. So, what's the researcher's approach to get published? Personally, I believe a third is science, a third is writing, and a third is selling. This may disappoint you. And the scientific method has a series of steps to be taken. You have to acquire knowledge, and this in a reproducible fashion. For a paper, you have to give the objective, the methods, the results, the discussions, and the conclusions. And this implies that either when you say something, you can prove it, or you have to communicate where you got it from. If you want to publish, you have to collect data, which needs a database. You have to identify problems, which need brains. You have to evaluate your ideas, which needs a lab. And finally, you publish it, and this needs commitment. If you look at evidence-based medicine, this is a relatively recent uh, thing. The first paper appeared only in 1992 and 99% were published after 1995. So how was medicine before evidence? You know that the highest degree of certainty or evidence is double-blind randomized trials. That's difficult to do in uh, surgery. I mean, who wants to be operated by a blind surgeon? I don't think many of us. Uh, random allocation of blind surgeons is not very popular either. And uh, therefore, uh, this is not so a possibility for us. You have also to consider that to get something accepted by the large public, it needs time. For instance, uh, Copernicus, it needs about 30 years till his view that the world uh, is not uh, based on the Earth as the center uh, made it through. And in our field, that's not very different. If you look at John Gibbons work about the pump oxygenator in 35, it took up to 53 till clinical application was possible. Vincent Gott published uh, heparin and carbon coatings in 63. It took about 30 years till this got accepted. Or even more recently, Francis Robichek's compliant aortic root took about 10 years to get accepted. And finally, if you look at suturless valves, with Hufnagel doing this in 52, it took 50 years to get to a clinical result. <coughs> the other thing which is maybe interesting to you to note is that the most recent and most promising novelty or new things, they are not in the Journal of Thoracic Cardiovascular Surgery or in the Annals or the European Journal, they are in the Wall Street Journal because that's where the real impact is. I would like to give you as a final uh, point about the impact factor, which in my view is totally useless, the story about the Poincaré conjecture. In 2002, uh, the Millennium Prize, the mathematical Millennium Prize, was uh, tagged for the Poincaré conjecture. That's a 19th century mathematical problem, and the uh, prize committee said, if you can solve this problem, you get a million dollars. And there is a man called Gregory Perelman from St. Petersburg. He made three publications on the web, the first one in 2002, 
and uh, it took about four years till the mathematical community catched up with this and finally in 2006 announced that uh, the Fields Medal, which is the Nobel Prize in Mathematics, will be given to Gregory Perelman. So to get uh, the highest uh, recognition in mathematics, uh, you don't need any publication in a, a registered journal or in a listed journal, and you don't need any impact factor at all. That's not necessary if your idea is good enough. But if you are doing it like Gregory Perlman, you will decline the Nobel Prize. And then, uh, I just show you Mr. Perlman and Mr. Poincaré, the problem they solved, it's about topology, it's rubber sheet geometry. And if you turn down the Nobel Prize or the Fields Medal, you make the cover of science. You don't have to submit it to the authors, to the, red, to the editors. This, the journals will take care of themselves. Thank you for your attention. Uh, the next